Cool, what are we doing today? Well, thank you for interrupting me eating my wing. Today, we're working on building up the VQ engine that we got. Ooh. Now, flashbacks to what I said before. You get the hair flip. Welcome back, brothers, to the G35 show. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'm going to show you the G35's engine. We just picked up this bad boy right here. It's the Rev Up VQ35 DE. Very hard to find, and somehow we found one for $400. That's a steal, brothers. Only problem with it blown head gasket. So, what we're doing right now is we tore it apart. As you can see, there's pieces all over the place. But yeah, so now I'm just waiting on the parts from Z1 Motorsports, my hookup for everything VQ, Nissan, Infinity. They got you covered. <laughs> you can actually see on the block where it blew the head gasket, you see here, see how it has this nice solid ring where the head gasket would be sealing, but then how you can see the discoloration as it kind of flames over, because that's actually the combustion getting out of the cylinder Pass the gasket and it does it on the cylinder here too. Tasty. So, obviously burnt. Definitely needs to be replaced. All right, now that you're caught up on what happened, and while you watch me enjoy this nice, beautiful wing, we need to now put a head gasket on this. Oh. But what we have discovered now, that everything's taken apart, we have a major issue. It's hard to see, but if you look in here, where are those imperfections, little like black divots yeah, kind of stuff right that. there? That is called pitting. Now, pitting is new to me since I've never worked on engines before, but as Ari explained to me before, that's what happens when you have a blown head gasket and you run the car for a little bit, coolant, oil, whatever gets in there, it kind of just, you know, I don't know the exact process, correct me if I'm wrong, but it heats up, contracts, and just basically breaks shit in there. Mm -hmm. um, the metal, you know, warps and basically it just kind of digs out. So all the carbon and everything from the combustion. Yeah, everything just kind of gets destroyed up in there. So the previous oh, owner, man. he put in new pistons, new piston rings, new rods, everything, and then he blew a head gasket. And it was a drift car before this, so I assume he just kind of ran it with a blown head gasket for a little bit. And that's what happens when you run your car with a blown head gasket. So you WRX owners that know you blow head gases all the time, don't run your car with a blown head gasket. Low blow, fella. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so on this video, we're gonna teach you how to jerry-rig a fix if you don't wanna resurface your block or your heads. So there's a couple ways we can accomplish nah, this. Like One th scenario that we saw online, which was actually probably the best way to do it, is they actually kind of dig out those pitted areas and then put JV Weld over the surface and then take a straight edge and scrape it backwards to actually make it smooth on the surface on both the head and the block so that it's basically recreating the mating surface. Obviously it's not professional, it's not taking it to somewhere and actually getting it decked, but this is something that you could do if you're trying to save some money. The other one is what we're gonna do is with Promtex they make a copper seal and basically you just spray this on the head gasket and it kind of fills up a little bit more space on the gasket so that it has the best chance to seal as opposed to just putting the gasket on bare. So anyway, the other one with the Permatex, um, what we're also told is to use, I forget what the chemical was, but in between the steel gaskets, actually put it in to kind of fill up that space with the straight edge. Chippy J's back over here, hanging out for the night. and to put that in between the layers of the steel gasket to kind of fill up the hole so that when it gets torqued down, it actually has something to press against the mating surface. Um, we may go that route because it is a decent amount. And actually right now is a good chance to show you what we're talking about and how we checked to see if there even was a deck problem. So let me get to that. I got it. So what we have here is a straight edge. So it's per machined, it's very accurate as long as it wasn't cut or shaved or touched at all because this is like, laser precision and it's perfectly flat so what we do with this is we actually run it across the deck of the block 
And so the pitting is right in this area here. And so I'll put this down across the whole deck, make sure I hold it on both sides. Tone dog's holding it over there and then shine a light behind it. And you see how you can see light underneath of it? The deck is not flat at all. Here, let's walk it over off of this edge. And you see how it's still shining light through it. Let's walk it up. And you gotta make sure you're not tilted forward or backwards, otherwise it'll show a false reading. But still sitting on the mating surface to see how much it's showing out. Luckily it's not in the cylinder wall, so it's not gonna be as detrimental, but still gonna be a problem because it's on the head. But see now, now obviously you're gonna see some space underneath the piston there, but on the line there, where the actual cylinder wall is, there's no light that's coming through that now. So we're good there. Good old tone dog shaking a can. Get ready to put this on it. But I gotta move my ride first, right? Yeah. I gotta move my whip like the hood boys say. <laughs> so we got it hanging here, ready to spray. Coil has been shaking up and stuff to get it gone. <sighs> and then, uh, yeah, eight inches away. Go after it. They don't say anything about dry time. No, no, no. This is it. <laughs> there we go. Been lying to girls our entire lives, I tell you. Anyway, yeah. So they don't have anything about dry time on here and how long it's supposed to sit. Uh, I always, the way I look at it, is spray it on there, and then once it's not so tacky, not soaking wet, throw it on there and call it a day. You're gonna spray Nate's toolbox. Uh, he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> So what we do is kind of put a light layer on it first, just to get some of that material. It's kind of just like painting, honestly. So you put a light layer just to get it started on there and get a coat on it. Like and then the second coat you put on a little heavier, but you don't want to put it too heavy to where it's dripping, because then you're just you're asking for it. So as Corlin is spraying his second coat, I got the torque specs over here for each one. And it has a sequence, so first step, 72 foot-pounds, then loosen all the bolts, then third, six foot-pounds, and 90 to 90 for a fourth and fifth step. And you follow each number in sequence to get it right, and it's pretty simple. Sometimes it takes an old head to show us young bucks how it's done. Well, you got a good Look at how, surface. look at how he's painting it. It's pure copper. He is not messing around. That's the way it needs to be. Yeah, don't forget to clean your mating surfaces before you put anything together. Because if you don't, you're going to have a bad day. You're going to have a bad time. <sighs> All right. Taking it off, laying it down. Make sure you have it on right. Make sure you put this one in there. <laughs> Sticky. Oh, yeah. Look at that copper coated gasket. Ooh, and we're going to lay her right down. Clean that off. Yeah, yes, here it is. We already did. He's good to go. Lay it down there, brother. Is it backwards? With the right head? Yeah, it's yeah, got it. the right head. And... Whoa, it's upside down. <laughs> oh shit, it's upside down! <laughs> you, had, you, had it, you had it for a second. I'm missing the goods. Look at this water. See that? That is so cool. Now look at this water. Well, this water's not even moving compared to that one. It's fucking perfectly still. What the fuck? That's wild. Just because of the iron in it. That's cool. Oh, you think that's what it is? Oh, that's all it is. It's got a bunch of iron in it. So it's slowing the water down. That's crazy. Yeah, so don't forget to clean your bolts up before you put them in. And then when you go to torque them down, you gotta use assembly lube to torque them down. Because if you put just oil on the threads and on the the, uh, the bolt heads, bolt washers, then you will not get the proper torque spec. So we are going to get the assembly lube over here somewhere. Yeah. So, torque specs for my so a little dab. I'm not gonna. For, I'm not gonna remember. A little dab on the threads. So it's gonna be one tool. Come on, as soon as he gets it out, it's a little cold today, so it's got a oh, no. thick jaw. Oh, yeah. And then a little bit underneath of it too. What's that? So like slide the head down, and then I put them on top of it so that it gets under the head too. Oh, okay. Oh Jesus. Nice. Right. nice. Yeah. All right. Who was that? Ooh. Rip it. Go! Yay! Wow. Perfect timing, actually. <laughs> Wait, repeat that. What's the next step? What's the next step? That's what it says. What is 90 it? to 95. 
Okay. You know, it's like, you know, it's a rough guess. <laughs> so we'll just turn the torque up and then go 90. Okay. Yep. So now which degrees. one is one now? Give me the not real number. One. One. Okay. One of them yeah, 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 Now 90 yeah. degrees. Yeah. So you see the way Please. that he's lining it up, he's doing like perpendicular with the block. And then when he's going to turn it, he's going to go parallel with the service here. So he's going to rip on it now. Is this back to the 72 foot pounds? No. 90. That's it. Yep. And then just go just around the block and do the same thing on every single one. Can we repeat that? What's the next step? What's the next step? That's what it says. What 90 to 95. Okay. You know, it's like, you know, it's a rough guess. <laughs> so we'll just turn the torque up and then go 90. Okay. Yep. So now which degrees. one is one now? Give me the not real number. One. One. Okay. One of them marks that. So now 90 degrees. Yeah. So we're going to run a little experiment because we're here in the 60 click off before he even gets to where he's at. So we're going to keep adjusting the torque wrench to see kind of where about the torque spec so is. I just did this one, right? Yeah. So it's three. Go right here. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's one, two, three, four. I'll add it. 13. Twenty-six. You'll know when you touch it. Wow, it's like right at 80. No shit. Say, which makes all sense. In the so if you guys want to do it, you just put it at 80, call it a day. So we got the other one over here drying. This one's pretty much done and ready. So now it's time to put the other head on and get this torque down. Alrighty, we are all torqued down, ready to go. And one thing you can notice with this copper gasket, you see how it's kind of squeezing it out? That's the whole point, is it's filling in whatever surfaces or whatever pits are in there. So obviously there's no pitting in this spot, that's why it squeezes it all out. But in the spot down here where that rough patch was, it'll fill in that gap with the copper. So, we are done for the night. Buzz, buzz. We have got it, buzz, buzz, new bee in the hive. <laughs> So we're all torqued down and it is nice and late and we got work tomorrow. So we're going to get on out of here. We're going to head it on home and we will see you on the next one.